Gary Baca along with Dance Pass. We got the group Ready for the World from Flint, Michigan yeah. right here. We got Melvin Riley yes, and yes. Uh, let's introduce some of the other guys. I'm Willie Triplett, keyboards and percussions. Joe Valentine, drums. I'm John Eaton, bass player. Yeah, ready for the world. Yes, yes. Flint, Michigan. Man, tell us, Melvin, what you guys been up to lately, man? We've been waiting for that new recording. You know, every summer, we're blessed to go out on the road. We usually start about maybe April, May, and we end about October, November. So we got the fans that still love that 80s, that 90s sound. What we love to do is tour. We love to give it to the fans, and that's what we do. What keeps you going, man? What stay, What keeps you consistent? It is the love for the music, man. It's the love for what we do. You know, we're blessed to be able to do something that we enjoy. So it's no job to us, you know, except for when the sound system ain't. But other than that, it's no job for us, man. This is what we love doing. Was there ever a time, man, that you guys wanted to just give in, just not be with the group and not record? Or is well, no, because I think the thing is, is that life has ups and downs. It doesn't matter what you do. It can be a nine to five. It can be family. Whatever it is, there's going to be ups and downs and everything. But it's about that passion, that motivation to keep on doing what you're doing through the bad times and the good times. Now, tell me about how Ready for the World started, right? Uh, Flint, Michigan? Uh, well, we uh, started in Flint, Michigan, competing against each other in talent shows. Uh, John and I had a group, Melvin and Gordon had their own band with Gerald and Greg was by himself and uh, we just kind of teamed up and went into the studio and cut our first, first record. Now at that time Prince was heavy, that synthesizer sound was out, um, what were your inspirations? What, what made you put these things out? Yeah we had a lot of influences, uh, you know I was into Earth, Wind and Fire, Cameo, Melvin was into the Funkadelics and believe Elvis. it or not Elvis Presley. <laughs> <laughs> and Gerald, what was your... Cameo, Confunction, the yeah. Barcades. All them groups like that, man. Them funk groups. You know, actually, uh, there's a group that came out not long after you that sounded, people were mistaking you for them, Dream Boy. Dream Remember, Boy? Yeah. Actually, they came out before us. They were really? in Detroit. We were in high school. But we didn't really know anything about it because we were recording at the same time. So Dream Boy was on the radio maybe a few weeks after we had finished doing Oshila, Deep Inside Your Love, but we hadn't heard it. So when it came out, it just kind of worked at the same time. And it was just a coincidence, you know, coincidence that it happened that way. Now, Michigan is that Ray Parker Jr., Michael Henderson, Michael Henderson, yeah. a lot. Oh man, Aretha Franklin, Stevie Diana Ross, Stevie Wonder, all the most Elder Bars, yeah. man, Grand Rapids, time. yeah. So Michigan has three points. Midwest, right, right. Midwest. The Midwest got it going on. Yeah, and it must have been a great time at that time, right? When you were young, going to school, uh, high school. I mean, how'd you like school and all that? I love school. I was an honor student in school. I went to Grambling. Shout out to Grambling University. But yeah, I love school, man. <laughs> Most likely to pay drums? Uh, well, I was went to be an engineer, but drums was my compassion and my passion. Love for the music. I had to come back to it. Well, speaking of college, uh, Melvin, was there something that you wanted to fall back on just in case the career didn't blow up? Well, I was in college when it started. I had my mother and dad were both school teachers, so I had no other choice but to go to. <laughs> I had to go to college, and uh, I was 17 when I graduated. So, our music thing took off while we were. Yeah, I was in college. He was in college, so it took off, and I just put that on hold. You know, to do my career, and the next thing you know, we're five million albums sold and moving forward. Touring with Luther Vandross. Right. That was our first tour with Luther Vandross. First tour with, with Luther. Yeah, we went from wow. the basement to touring with Luther Vandross. Yeah. Well, hey, since you mentioned him, t uh, can you tell us about your uh, time with Luther, just sitting down with him? Oh, Did he give, give you any great advice? Well, it's priceless to sit down with uh, one of the biggest legends of R&B, which is Luther Vandross. And, you know, he would always go on stage with us. We would be ready to get off, go out on stage, and Luther would be right behind us. He'd be a sound check all day, just an everyday person. But huge when it came to studio, huge when it came to the stage, but everyday people. And it kept, he was humble, and it was a good reflection. You know, it made us realize that, hey, it doesn't matter how successful you can be, you stay who you are. You don't have to change, you know, you don't have to go Hollywood. Yeah. We're talking with Ready for the World. How did you know you could sing, Mel? <laughs> Girls. <laughs> I was in the sports football, and I went to a talent show one day. And I was kind of feeling embarrassed for the guys that was singing. <laughs> and I was like, how could they do this? And then a guy named Jesse Wilborn got up and started singing, The Closer I Get to You, and the girls went nuts. And I said, oh, next year I'll be in the talent show. And that's how I really started to get into the game.
Well, we know the group Ready for the World for the song Oh Sheila as well. Um, and a lot of people were asking, uh, is, was that about Sheila E? No. Uh, no? Uh, can you tell us how that exactly. song came about? I had a lot of names in mind when I wrote it. And it was Oh Lisa, Oh whatever, whatever. And as I was tinkling around, it just felt right with the Oh, Oh Sheila. So a lot of even Sheila E asked me that one time at a, uh, uh, what was it, Soul Train Music Awards. And it's not about Sheila E, it's just a, a girl's name that I came up with. Well, it should be about Sheila E, because she yeah. is fine. Hey. hey. Um, and Ceramic Girl, how, how did you come up with that one? Man, I, I've always been the type of guy that didn't like a girl with a lot of makeup. <laughs> Even in high school, I kind of liked the clay face thing. I never liked it. I liked the natural. So when I got a little older, I put it into words, which was Ceramic Girl, which is a girl that overly does all the makeup just to get attention. So that's what that's about. And of course, we can't forget Digital Display. Yeah. Um, this is one of the ones that hit the dance floor. I mean, all the clubs was playing this, uh, along with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, right. and that was a great time. Janet was out, um, Love Me Down, um, or is it Love You Down? Love or, you down. Let me love man, you. I could just love her down anytime. <laughs> um, hey, I made love to that song, <laughs> and I got a son. That's good stuff. And that was a sound, that was, I had that in the background, I gotta admit it, all right? So, how did you come up with it? Uh, just filthy. No, just <laughs> let's get real. One hundred. <laughs> just uh, it actually, it was called "Let Me Lay You Down." At first, uh, Drill's got a recording of it, but what happened on was, yeah, set. Always on, on the cassette. <laughs> yeah, I have an old recording that we did in the it's studio, like in the basement on a cassette. The original, original lay down. He covers that in detail. We, we're doing a documentary, <laughs> so he covers it in detail. In the yeah, it's in our documentary. And we got banned with tonight. Tonight took a little while because it was so raunchy with the lyrics so I was a little conscious when I wrote love you down I said well I wanted to be lay you down but I know we might get stopped in the airplane so I changed it from lay you down to love you down but really it was supposed to be lay you down and in there it sounds like you say lonely and fat <laughs> <laughs> what is what's that lyric well that's in deep inside your love oh yeah lonely. deep inside your love yeah 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 I was just imagining being lonely as a young man, that was about it. <laughs> hey, you ain't never been lonely, Melvin. Hey, hey well, I've seen you in videos in Texas uh, at somebody's house. <laughs> Walking around. Could be, could be. No. <laughs> you didn't have no shoes on or nothing. <laughs> what you got to say about that? We'll leave that alone. It, it was probably me. It was probably me. It was Melvin. So, and hey, guys, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, man, growing up and, and uh, your name and all that. Well, I'm John Eden again, bass player for Ready For. I'm just a smooth. Cool criminal. <laughs> That's about it. And, about and and I'm Willie Triplett. I uh, <laughs> see. I, I went from brass instruments to drums to keyboards, um, like a multi. You still rolling in Michigan? No, I live in in Atlanta now. Oh, you're in Atlanta. Yeah. Is it funky or what, what's why Atlanta? No, it's, it's Atlanta's the truth, y'all. The straight up truth. <laughs> you want to come to Atlanta? They'll, they'll tell y'all where to go. <laughs> well, we need to go. And uh, a little bit about yourself, man. Where you from and all that? Uh, Flint, Michigan. I'm a uh, mama's boy, you know what I'm saying? But no, I mean, I'm into interior design. I love architect, textual work, and engineering was my passion. But drums are always going to be there, music. Okay. Man, I've seen you in them photos, but Ready for the World have been known for their hairstyles. Yeah. And uh, Melvin, man, I, I don't know if I want to call it a Jerry Curl or Curl or an S Whip. Or <laughs> His mother. His, his mother. Am I right? Yeah, Miss Lippin. Best Best curls in the world. His mother used to make the best. I mean, everybody in the industry wanted to get the Ready for the World curl. Uh, but Jamie Foxx was telling me a story when he was young, and he was trying to get that Ready for the World curl. <laughs> and nobody could do it like his mom. Whatever her her, her chemistry was, yeah, man. that was it. Now, uh, tell me the high point in Ready for the World's career. Was there a high point, let's say, for you, John? Uh, yeah, I would say when uh, Tonight first came out. The very first came out. We were riding down the streets and Flint never heard it on the radio before. That was one of the major uh, points of uh, knowing that we made it, you know. Yeah. Let me sing that. To, if you oh, forget, hold on. <laughs> what about you? That, that's a good one. But uh, I think going number one across the board: pop, dance, R&B, and video. So I think that was a high point for me. I'm gonna say getting that first royalty check and hearing <laughs> my music on the radio station. And uh, let me ask you this: um, 
what's a what's a great night out a romantic night what would you do take her out to the movies or what would you say a romantic evening would be well, ready guess, for the world well I guess I'll go pick her up you know what I'm saying have a dozen of roses you know what I'm saying some little chocolate <laughs> get in the limo go take a horse carriage ride you know what I'm saying through the, through the say park. carriage ride yeah through the park man you know what I'm saying let her know how I feel about her you know what I mean and go back and relax and chill watch a Netflix movie we're broke, bro. You spent all that money, but all right. And uh, Melvin, what is your greatest moment while with the group? Mm -hmm. I can remember being at the hotel on tour with Luther, I think it was, and our managers called and said, oh, Sheila went number one. Pop. And I, it had gone number one maybe a week before R&B, and I was already blown away by that. And then we went number one, pop. And I think that's one of the highlights for me. This happened to number one all across the board, like Willie was saying. Changed all your lives, right? Pretty much. Um, man, it's been great talking with you guys, man. Ready for the world. I love you guys, man. Keep Thank doing you. it. Just like Men Condition and uh, Jodeci and all these other groups that are still doing things. Guy, still out there, man. We're all young. We're yeah. that generation, like, let's say the dramatics and the shy lights. We're, you know, yeah. we love them. Right. Now you guys are coming up. That's right. And, uh, you know, you go to any concert, man, and Ready for the World's on the beer. People are going to be there. People are yeah. going to be checking you guys out. So keep it going. Do you have any advice, man, for anybody? coming up uh, you guys been in the industry I would say oh, at least 30 years right oh, yeah. what could you say to you know the young musician the people coming up and I know it's changed because of record right. labels and, and it's right. different I would think uh, educate yourself as far as how to continue to have longevity in the business don't just try to be a one-time situation pretty much set yourself up long term write songs that are gonna be classics uh, if you either got it or you don't a lot of times when it comes to writing But if you do don't go the easy route and just do something for, for the now dig deep within yourself Come up with something that's really good would be my advice because music continues to go if it's good Melvin Riley, I would say stay humble stay true to yourself to your craft. Don't give up. Just keep trying That's right. Stay humble. So when mom says take out the trash you got to take out the grab. You ain't ready. That's what Bootsy told me one time. His mama Collins told him, hey, go take out the trash, Bootsy. Yeah, yeah. William. He was a William. <laughs> All right. This may sound cliche-ish, but it's 90% business, 10% show. That's the way it's always been, and that's the way it should be. So, um, you know, think that as you're writing, as you're performing, any aspect of this music industry and this music, even if it's just a passion, it's still that. Because, you know, what you create today, you pass on to your, your children and offspring. Woody Allen said 80% of success is just showing up um, for you. I would say uh, just continue to write, always practice, and continue to grow. Once you get, get that instilled in your brain, you'll be all right. Hey man, before we go, Melvin, you have such a great voice for the people that couldn't make the show, man. You think you give us a little some some of love me da love love me down or tonight or never really mattered too much to me. Better you were just too damn dude for me. All that matter when you were my my girl and baby. That's it. Yeah, give it up one time, Melvin Riley, ready for the world, G Spot, along with Dance Pass. Give it up, folks. Here they are. Peace. Right.